The best way to understand any of these things, of course, is via an example. So the example we'll take a look at today is this one. Building on the assessment application from previous videos, add a save button which takes the details of one assessment object from the user and writes them to a file called assessments.data. So in terms of the file handling here, we have a number of simple steps to follow. Firstly, we ensure all necessary objects are serializable. So that was our first step we looked at. Then we need to identify or create a file with the correct name. So remember, if the file doesn't exist, Java will create it for us. We create a byte stream to use to send the data to the file. Create an object stream to enable sending of whole objects. Then we send the object to the file. And then finally, we close the object stream. So let's write the code for the save button. Here you'll see I have my assessment application from earlier video examples. And literally we're just entering in a name type and weighting of an assessment. We can add it to an array list. We can display it from the array list and we can search the assessments by type as well as deleting elements from the array list. So we're going to add a new button now that simply says save. And we'll just increase the font there for consistency. And I think it needs to be bold also. OK, so this is our save button and we're going to write the code that goes behind the save button. So we double click on the save button and then in our source code, you'll see it has generated J button one action performed. Now, the reason it's still called J button one is because I didn't change my variable name. So back to the design, right click and change variable name. You can imagine as we're adding all of these different buttons, leaving them just numbered one to 10 is not going to help when it comes to trying to find a particular method. So save BTN is what I'm going to call this. Now, when we go back in, you'll see it has actually changed that code for us now. And the method is save BTN action performed. So we want when we click the save button to grab the text from the text fields, store it in an assessment object, and then write that object to a file. OK, so first things first, name equals name tf dot get text. Type equals type tf dot get type. Sorry, get text. Waiting equals waiting tf dot get text. Now, the thing about waiting is that waiting was declared as a double. So we need to parse everything that comes from the text field, double dot parse, double waiting tf dot get text and a semicolon at the end. Then we create a new assessment object. So you'll see we have our assessment class. We'll come back to that in a second. Assessment A equals new assessment. A dot set name, name, A dot set type, type, A dot set waiting, waiting. OK, so that sets all of our data to the assessment object called A. Now, before we write this to a file, we need to go to our assessment object. And where we have public class assessment, we implement serializable. Now, just watch out. It's serializable with a Z. We would be inclined to sometimes spell it with an S. So just watch out for that. You'll see it says cannot find symbol class serializable. So we right click, fix imports. It suggests the serializable class from the java.io package and we click OK. And there we go. We have our serializable class has been imported up at the top. Now our error is gone. So back to our GUI class. Now that we've done all that, we want to follow our, our other steps. OK, so we need to clear all of the objects that we're going to need. So we're going to need to establish a connection with a file. So we'll have file out file. 
we're going to use file output stream, which you'll remember is a byte stream, f stream, and then we're going to wrap the bytes in an object output stream. So object output stream, o stream. Okay. Those are all giving us errors. Cannot find symbol, cannot find symbol. Right click, fix imports. And up at the top of our class, we now have our import java.io.file output stream, file and object output stream. So back to our method now. Remembering, of course, when we're dealing with file handling, we have to manage our exceptions. So we'll use our try statement. And in there, we're going to say out file is a new file. And that file is going to be now. When we did file handling with text, it would have been output.txt. Because we're writing an object, it has to be output.dat or .data, okay? But it's going to be a different file type this time. So you can do dat or data. Then we do fstream is a new instance of file output stream. And that's going to take out file as a parameter. And then we have object output stream is a new instance of, sorry, o stream is a new instance of object output stream. And that's going to take f stream as a parameter. And the last one here that we created, o stream, is the one we're going to actually use to write the object to the file. And that's our next step. O stream dot write object is our method here. And that object that we're writing is A because A is the object that contains all of our data. So O stream dot write object A. And let's just for our own p purposes, J option pane dot show message dialog null file written successfully and then finally o stream dot close just to close the stream rather than leave it open now you'll see we still have an error here over the try telling us that we have a try but we have no catch so we have to catch the exceptions i o exception e System dot out dot print ln and we'll just print e for now. Okay. Again, we're getting an, a warning here. Cannot find symbol class io exception. Right click, fix imports. System dot out dot print ln. I have too many brackets here. Okay. So that is my save method working. Let's just run that now. And if we do op exam terminal assessment and 0.5 and we hit save file written successfully. And now if we take a quick look at our folder, you'll see we have this output.data file. Now, if we open this, just using TextPad, you'll see it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, you can see the data is in there, exam, terminal assessment, all that kind of stuff, but it's also surrounded by some additional nonsense. That's because the purpose of this is not that we would then go and open up the text file and view the objects there. The idea being it's persistently storing the data so that we can access it later from our application again.